Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Deepa, and I cover AI at CB Insights. Over the next 10 minutes, I want to walk you through some of the ways in which banks can start leveraging AI today. But if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this presentation, whether or not you work at a bank, is to understand your organization's risk tolerance, to understand your own unique needs, and pick your vendors or AI projects accordingly. Um, because there are a lot of options out there. And to just give you an idea of how saturated the, saturated the market is, close to 3,300 companies have raised equity for the for, uh, have raised equity to either provide software as a service or AI-enabled products um, in the market, and 20 billion in funding last year alone. That's more than seven times growth in the last five years. In 2012 and 13, we saw very few companies even discussing machine learning, and a lot of them were big tech companies that already had projects going on. But today, every major pharma company, agriculture, uh, cybersecurity, credit bureaus, everyone's talking about AI. But just because you're talking about AI doesn't mean you have an efficient implementation strategy in place. And that is something we are seeing in banking today. Here's a quote from the CEO of Capital One, where he says, consumers will demand it, technology competition will necessitate it, but the challenge is banks aren't built to deliver those capabilities. If we think about why that is, a couple of reasons come to mind, but two that I would like to highlight are outdated IT infrastructure. So within the same banking department, you have systems that don't share data or communicate with each other. And the second is hype-driven goal setting, which is a problem across industries when it comes to AI, because the narrative around AI is so polarizing. It's either the magic bullet that's going to solve everything or it's going to put us out of our jobs that larger corporations have trouble wrapping their head around what AI can really do and what it can't do today. So this is something that happened with big data as well. In 2012 and 13, everyone started talking about big data, but very few people knew what kind of data sets they needed and how to monetize on it. And slowly that started dying away only to be replaced with AI. But three reasons why banks need to turn this around and have an efficient AI implementation strategy is if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. As a bank, you're not just competing with other banks today, but also with big tech companies and fintechs who already have an established relationship with highly tech-savvy customers. So if you want to stay relevant and competitive, if you want to provide personalized experiences to your customers, and if you want to improve your margins, you need AI. But this is the why. But how do you go about implementing AI? If you are in charge of initiating an AI project within your department, where do you start? Here are just a few examples that I could think of of AI solutions that are relevant to banking, and it's overwhelming, and this is not even it. When we talk to clients, one thing they're interested in knowing is what are companies in other industries doing with similar technologies? And another thing that comes across is within the same industry, different clients have different needs at this time. So if we look at this on a framework where the y-axis is need maturity, do you have a business need for this today? And the x-axis is tech maturity. Can this technology solve this problem for you today? And if you take all of these applications and plot them on this two by two, this is where they land. We find that a lot of banks go after emerging niche applications where there is no established process within bank banking departments yet. While this is great for companies that have the infrastructure to invest in emerging tech and to uh, in riskier technologies, it may not be the best solution for every company of every size. Today, I want to highlight three applications where there's already um, an established need within banks and where the technology has already started uh, providing some value to um, customers. So how can banks start winning with AI today? The first one is location intelligence. Vendors who sell location intelligence essentially collect your data on where you've been, where you're going, your purchasing patterns, and this is nothing new for banks. They've been partnering with vendors here for decades now to decide where to open new branches or for merger and consolidation decisions. But what's changing is the depth of analysis that you can do with AI. 
For example, what's the projected revenue from opening a branch in location X versus Y? How can you group your prospects and customers into um, subgroups based on hidden patterns so that you can launch targeted marketing campaigns? Um, so it's not reinventing the wheel, but leveraging the tools that you already have because your SaaS vendors have started upgrading their technology on their end to integrate deep learning into their workflows. Here are some partnerships that have come up in the last couple of years, and Plink uh, is one thing I wanted to highlight. is a platform developed by Bank Columbia, and they're not only using it internally for their business intelligence purposes, but selling this to third-party merchants as a value-added service. The second application is personal finance management. And this is a great example of how if you don't do it, someone else is gonna come in and do it. Consumers really want banks to take an active role in their financial well-being. And a number of fintech companies started offering advisory services in real time on a daily basis before banks caught on. And so now every major bank has a personal finance management app. And at this point, it's pretty much uh, table stakes. This is just a survey reiterating what I just said. Two of the top five things consumers wanted most from their banks were wealth building advice and personal finance management advice. One existing data set, data set that banks can leverage is transaction data. So not just um, looking at historically what happened, but being able to tell co uh, customers what their spending is gonna look like by the end of the month in specific categories. And building off, off of this, being able to give advisory services on what they should do based on what you projected. And finally, auto saving is a feature that we're already seeing. So based on your projection, I'm gonna move $30 automatically into your savings account. An interesting example is Goldman Sachs, which made a huge pivot in its business model by entering consumer banking. And they've really scaled through acquisitions. Last year, they acquired a PFM app called Clarity Money, and this gave them access to one million users. And the app is still open to non-Goldman um, Sachs customers. So this increases their brand visibility. This allows them to see uh, spending patterns on a macro level, not just for their clients, but a larger sec section of the population. And it's a great way to engage prospective and current customers. These are more on the customer retention and engagement side, but internally, if I had to pick one thing that's most important for banks today is being able to automate uh, anti-money laundering and KYC compliance procedures. Banks are paying hefty non-compliance fees. We see this very often in the news, and the reason for that is finding fraudulent activity or even verifying someone's identity across an international database is like finding a needle in a haystack. And vendors here are starting for, to provide end-to-end -end solutions. Some of these processes within AML and KYC are more automated than others, but we're already seeing um, banks start to part partner with um, SaaS vendors who are able to provide these solutions. Going back to our framework, the, I just highlighted three where there, there was already a high need within banking. But depending on where your organization is right now, you may want to pick an AI strategy that is right for you. If you want to experiment with a technology that's taken off in another industry and understand how it's applicable to banking um, or understand what some of your competitors are doing, um, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to chat with you about it. You can find me on Brella or I'll be in the networking area today. I'm also gonna leave you with some additional research that you can find on our blog um, research portal. So some of it is upcoming, some of it is already available. Um, so thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.